when you cut out oxalates from the diet, it, it's not like everything goes away. And this is what I think your listeners really need to understand is that actually that's just the start of it <laughs> is that cutting it out is, is literally is the start of the process because unlike gluten or unlike, um, any other kind of phytonutrient or plant chemical that is potentially going to cause like a sensitivity in you. This is not a sensitivity. This is an accumulation of a toxin. You have to understand that your body is accumulating this stuff. And that means that actually what can happen is, is that you need to get rid of it at some point. But the way you're getting rid of that is really going to, or the rate at which you're getting rid of that is going to depend on several things. And one of those things is actually how much you're eating in the diet. So that There is some kind of sensing mechanism whereby our body is detecting, tissues are detecting that levels of oxalate are in the blood. And we know, okay, it's like if there's a high level of oxalate in the blood, then we are not going to release any that's stored or sequestered in tissue because that could potentially be very damaging mm. to the body that could be very that could be a major threat to the kidneys you know if you pump up blood levels of oxalate too high you're potentially going to cause acute renal failure uh, this is what happens when i mean there was a study just last year actually or this year there was a case study of a woman who gave herself acute kidney failure by having like four spinach smoothies that day. When you, all of a sudden, if you were to lower the amount of oxalate in your diet, as let's say that you went on a carnival diet. So what is gonna happen then is your blood level of oxalate is going to go down. And when that goes down, that means it's safe to get rid of this crap. Your body will actually begin to release stored oxalates pumping up the blood level again, and that will then be excreted in whichever way that you can excrete it. And this is called dumping. Most of it occurs through the gut. Some people tend to dump more through the urine. They have symptoms which are predominantly urinary. Some people can have um, diarrhea or constipation related symptoms with dumping. You see that when you are releasing oxalate from the, the stores, oxalate is going to be activating that immune system. You know, we were talking about the inflammasome before, but it, you know, it's very much detected as a metabolic poison. And so when you are dumping that, you are really activating inflammatory signals. You're activating like an inflammatory cascade, which could manifest as, um, perhaps like a, a rash. It could manifest as hives. It could manifest in, I mean, it seems to manifest in lots of different ways for lots of different people. Um, but if you are dumping through the gut, then it is going to, it can cause digestive symptoms, pain. It can cause sandy colored stools. It may cause blood to be in your stool. Um, there can, there have been many different symptoms related to the GI tract. It's important to note that dumping appears to go in cycles. So it, for some people, it may be every three weeks. In other people, it may be every month or it may be every couple of days. This is the problem with oxalates. We can't really test it. Yeah, there's no reliable test for it. So you can't always test the urine because, as we've said, the way that the body is excreting it is cyclical. So you go through cycles and and there's even some, to some degree, there's a circadian variation to that as well. So it may occur at certain times of the day for certain people and it can vary. And so when you take a urine sample, there may be nothing in there, but that does not mean that you do not have an oxalate issue. It can mean that you've, that you've taken the urine sample when you, um, when you were not excreting any oxalate through your urine, right? Mm. That said, that can be an, an easy excuse used by someone to kind of claim that oxalate is the cause of all issues. And it's clearly not. Like anyone who goes on the TLO group, if if they're not aware, then they, you know, they could very easily get the impression that oxalates were the cause of all different kinds of health conditions. And it, it's, it's simply not the case. Yeah. Um, and no one's trying to say that. It's interesting when you do run urine samples, like 
I said that there's no reliable test, but I do have many people come to me and they want to look at various things, some of the B vitamins and their metabolism and stuff. And there is a test called the urinary organic acids test, and that's by Great Plains Laboratory in the United States. So I do, I mean, I do run quite a lot of those tests. Um, they're not always diagnostic. And as I said, they can provide false negatives. So actually, if someone's not excreting oxalates, but they fit all of the symptoms and then they, they feel better on a low oxalate diet, then they've got, they've, they've, they've likely got oxalate issues. But if you run a urinary organic acids test, you would be surprised at how many people do have like really high urinary oxalate. Like it's, it's, it's very interesting. People with all kinds of different health conditions, generally people with gut issues tend to have high urinary oxalate. And that fits in perfectly with the research is that people who have leaky gut, who have gut dysbiosis, who have gut issues, they are at a higher risk for absorbing more oxalate. So I work out in the field. I work with people who have actually, who come to me with these symptoms, many of them already on a low oxalate diet or have heard about it and want to try it. And you see it playing out and you just see people, um, sometimes you see a miraculous a miraculous improvement in symptoms within a couple of days. Other times it takes longer. Um, other times you think it's oxalate, but it's not. But more often than not, going on a low oxalate diet appears to really help. And we we're talking about some of the things that that you can do, right? So some of the things that people can do. Um, and we were, <clears throat> when I said that your body is, is excreting this oxalate, it's getting rid of it. If you are listening to this, you know, if you, if you tried a low oxalate diet and you're thinking, well, what can I do about it? Because actually I've tried going low oxalate and generally my symptoms got really, you know, they may have improved or they may have got a lot worse. Um, or they may have kind of cycled. And there are various things that you can do to actually support that process.